Hey, how you doing, sir? I'm doing good, Sam. How are you? Oh, feeling wonderful. Excellent, excellent, man. It's good to see you today. Yeah, it's good to see you. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. This is the Formable Podcast, where we talk about formable moments in the lives of martial artists. Oh, and perfect. Let me tell you something. I have a formable moment with you, actually. Okay. I was at the Madtown Throwdown. And I was helping build All a right. shark fin. And I uh, looked away from the main event for just a moment. And I heard lightning crack. And when I turned around, the entire thing was over. I believe that was a right cross from Smiling Sam. I it's very possible. It, who was my opponent? I, I I fought two or three times there. Yeah, the Madtown Throwdown. I believe that it is. Excuse me. I got to cheat on that, brother. I, I would have to guess it's Eric Heimrich. Yes, I do believe that's exactly who it is. Yeah, so that one was kind of funny. I fought that fight with a broken wrist. Uh, and... The whole camp. I mean, that was the last fight I had. So I fought 12 times in 12 months. That was fight number 12. I broke my wrist in like either fight 10 or 11. Uh -huh. I said, I'll be all right. I, I could throw it once. And so I threw it. And that was the one time I could throw it. It landed. He fell over and my, my hand exploded. Um, but it, it worked out really well. It was worth it. Well, yeah. For me, it was like I looked away for just a second. I love watching combat sports. I turned around. Somebody said my name. I turned around and it lightning cracked in the arena. And yeah. then I looked over and everything was over. And they were like, did you see that? I was like, no, you were calling my name. Of course I didn't see that, you know. <laughs> and then afterwards, we're getting all our stuff together. And um, you were right next to, some, to me talking to somebody. And Bill says, that was the guy who threw that punch, the one you heard but didn't see. And yeah. I was like, oh, wow. And I looked over and you had this huge smile and these dimples. And I was like, that is the dude. Seriously, that's the dude. Uh, oh, my gosh, Sam, you have been through so many different fights and so much stuff since then. It's amazing. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm over 80 fights in my career so far. Sam, when did you start fighting? Uh, I was either 20 or 21. Uh, it was well before I started training, but I started fighting. I was either, I remember after my first fight, someone bought me a beer. I just don't remember if I was allowed to drink it. <laughs> well, that was in Wisconsin. That was in Illinois, actually. Illinois. Yeah, it was the XF, XFC or XFS. Uh, and I, shoot, I don't even remember the guy's name. Wagner, maybe. Uh, yeah, I don't even remember his name. Well, you know, you've been fighting for a long time. I was absolutely fascinated by the punch, and I can't believe I get to tell you about the punch that I heard. I never even saw it, but I've never heard anything like that in an arena. It was like lightning cracked. Yeah. Sam, what's it like right now to be on the top of your game? I feel great. Like, it, it surprises me how well I feel. Uh, you know, we cha changed companies a little bit, uh, cha changed the way I'm fighting, and I made some adjustments to my training. I just, I feel great. I feel fun. Uh, I, I really enjoy what I'm doing and who I'm doing it with. That's great, because you, I mean, you're looking great, and you're, and you're always smiling, which, come on, you're smiling, Sam, that's your thing, you know, I mean, not for nothing, <laughs> but uh, I'm really so pleased that things are going well in your life, and to watch karate combat, that is such a spectacle, and you're doing so well in there. Um, in the from the change from the UFC and the rules a little bit, what was that like to get ready for? Uh, it's it's just different. It's a faster paced fight than the UFC, and I've always been a slower paced fighter. But I had to really work on making my opponents fight a little slower, fight my speed. And it, it worked out pretty well for me so far. 
Um, especially in the you know the five round fights where I have a little more time to to make it last. Mm -hmm. Sam, do you have anybody that you could recommend for our podcast that's got a great story? And I don't mean to put you on uh, Trevor track. Wells. He no, no, Trevor Wells would have a great story. He's a he's a, a student of mine or has been for a long time. He lives in Texas now. But uh, he's just wonderful. He was on Conor McGregor versus Michael Chandler's uh, Ultimate Fighter, and right now he's struggling to get a fight. He's he's trying, but people are running from him. Uh, Tre Trevor Wells has got a great story. That's great, Sam. I'm going to reach out to Trevor if that's all right, and see if we can't get him on the oh. show. Yeah, please do. Excellent. So, with the Formable Podcast, can you pick one moment? And I know you have a great many moments. I mean, a career like yours has been long and is, there's ups and downs and, and all that good stuff. But could you give us one moment that you felt really helped form you into who you are as the fighter and uh, the smiling Sam we see today? Um, yeah, but my first, my first ever guess, I believe his name was Wagner. Uh, didn't know anything about fighting. And he fell over and I celebrated. And, you know, the rules in MMA, you get back up and he can go at it. So he got back up and he took me down and beat the brakes off me. But for a second there, I thought I won. Um, and to this day, it might be the biggest butt kick I've ever taken. Like, it was, he beat me up round two. Round one was all me, but round two was, I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, and that was, I mean, from the very beginning, he, he just kind of hooked me. I said, okay, this is something I can get behind. And then I just started fighting from there. I just took off. It lit, it lit something in me. And it was without that, you know, original butt kick, and uh, I, I would not have become the fighter I am. Thank you for sharing that. You're, yeah. You're a champion. You're on top of your game right now. You didn't have to share that, you know. And one of the things that we found while I've been talking to people is that sometimes the not-so-positive moments can end up being just as powerful, if not more powerful, than the other moments. Yeah, going into the fight, I really didn't care. I mean, nobody wants to get beat up, and y'all want to prove you're the biggest, baddest man in the room. But I really, I had nothing, nothing, no pressure, no nothing. I just went in there and said, all right. And then I, at the end of it, as I was sitting there bleeding, drinking my beer that may have been illegal, I was again like, well, all right. <laughs> um, and it, was, it just opened my eyes as to what fighting actually was. The movies lied to me. Do you find that there's a lot of folks that talk to you um, and, and ask about fighting and they don't necessarily have an idea? Yeah, I, no, nobody has an idea until they've done it. Nope. Uh, they, they really don't. I, and even the guys that are on my side that agree with me, they have no idea. What, they 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 don't truly know what they're agreeing to. Uh, that the world would be a better place if everyone got punched in the face at least once. Uh, and I, I truly believe that. People have no idea what it is like to be humbled in something that everybody deep down thinks they know how to do. I, uh, well, you know better than I, but I, I totally agree. I have a really good relationship at my martial arts school with the local MMA gym. And uh, many times when folks come by me and I'll send them over there because it's a different, after being punched in the face, you rethink things and it's totally okay. But either, either they come back and they're a lot nicer to deal with sometimes or yeah. they find that other thing or they're like, Oh my gosh, they disappear because what they thought was going to happen and then what happened were really two different things. Yeah, but men particularly, but women too, but men, deep down, even if they say, yeah, I would never win a fight, I'm a big this, I'm a big that, I'm a sissy, deep down, they think they can do it. Deep down, in the, you know, they would never admit it because they wouldn't want to be proven wrong, but deep down, they all think, yeah, I can hold my own. But until you've been punched, until you you know, learn you can't fight. It's just it, people don't don't give enough appreciation to the humbling experience of getting beat up and what, what it'll do to a guy. And it's it's too many. 
our our politicians would be way better if they'd all been in a fight once or twice. Well, they act like they're in a fight all the time, so that makes total sense. I mean, if just once it was like, all right, we're going to give you 30 seconds and see how this kind of works out, you know? I, you know, back when the country was becoming the country, they used to duel. I'm not even talking to the death with pistols. I mean, they go out there and they fight. Uh, and they had a more honest politician back then is when the fear of getting beat up was there. I agree. I'm from, I'm from central Illinois and I grew up in Springfield and it's not the uh, most rough place, but it's definitely not bright and cheery all the time. And uh, there was a threat of violence throughout high school, even when there wasn't violence. So people tended to respect each other a little bit more. Do you think that's something that's going on nowadays? I don't want to get you on a rant, but I kind of do. You know, I want to go on one too. Why not? Did you say, do they do they respect one another more or do they respect each other less? What did you say? Do you feel that they, like we as a society, without any type of uh, physical altercation or whatever, sometimes we're, we're super disrespectful. And it just seems like when I was a kid, there was a threat of something. You couldn't just say anything to anybody. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you agree, Sam? No, absolutely. Uh, growing up, I mean, it was probably uh, my. I'm a millennial, so my age is the ones that were a bunch of mamas, mamas boys. Uh, but but the generation before me, the Gen Gen Xers, they were the ones that they they could get hit, and you didn't have to worry about the lawsuits. You didn't have to worry about going to jail. Get hit, and then you guys become friends. Uh, and it, it was a better type of person back then. Now, particularly with the internet and social media and all that, it's you can say whatever you want and never have to fear anything. Um, it's just raised a bunch of cowards, a bunch of people that'll say whatever they want with no fear of anything. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely agree. You know, I've uh, been lucky enough to do martial arts for over 30 years. I'm certified to teach seven different martial arts. Um, but what does that mean? That punch in the face is the truth. No matter what it is I thought I was going to do right before I got punched in the face, that punch in the face is absolutely the truth, you mm -hmm. know? And, uh, yeah, I was just wondering your take on that just a little bit because I am a Gen Xer and that's kind of how I feel about it, you know? But every generation thinks that the next generation's bullshit, right? So, yeah. I, I I've got hope for Gen uh for Gen Generation Alpha. You know, it goes millennial, then you got the the Gen Zers, uh, the Generation Alpha, which is my kids. I got hope for them. They're being raised by a bunch of millennials. Are very self aware. We know, you know, in the general sense of things, we know we're a bunch of sissies, and I think we're going to try and raise our children not to be. Isn't that just the way it goes, Sam? Because usually the pendulum's got to swing so oh, yeah. far for any type of middle ground to be reached. Uh, that makes yeah. total sense to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, which, I mean, Gen X, you guys were the, the what do they call them, the, the latch, the latch box, the latch, we the latch kids, that's what it was. Y'all were just ignored by <laughs> boomers. Like, you guys were, <laughs> boomers gave birth to you and they said, all right, we'll see you on our deathbed. And so you all raised yourself. And so then you raised these Gen Zers and some younger millennials. Mm -hmm. And you guys uh, uh, sissified us. You you overparented to make up for what you guys did. So now we've been overparented. Now we're going to probably underparent or maybe we'll find a sweet spot. But I, I've got hopes for Generation Alpha. Right on, brother. We're all looking for a sweet spot. That's I mean, that's not too much to ask, but every generation shoots for it, and we just usually miss by just a little bit. You know what I mean? But the sweet spot's what we're going for. How many kids do you have, Sam? I have six. Six kids, man. Yeah, and uh, we, we're not done. We just don't have anything in the, in the oven just yet. Sure. Well, keep smiling, Sam. I'm sure it'll work itself out. You know what I mean? Uh, I think that's it for sure. Six kiddos. How old are they? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, yeah, 11, 10, 8, twin five-year-olds, and a two-year-old. Oh, that's got to be so much fun. Oh, fun and work. It is constant. Absolutely, <laughs> it is. 
you know, that's yeah. one of those things that, like, what you were saying, being a latchkey kid, right? I mean, then all of a sudden, I did kind of overparent a little bit. I did it from a male perspective, right? Which is probably not yeah. really over parenting too much. But uh, at the same time, you know, those are such fun ages. Do you get, do you train with them and, and, and work with them and teach with them? They, they were all literally, they were all in the gym before they went home. They were born. And then uh, from the hospital, we went to the gym, from the gym, we went home. Uh, my, my youngest one was born at home. My, my two year old kid was born on our couch. So he, he, he didn't go to the gym first, but he went to the gym day one. Uh, <laughs> so no, they, they all, they all trained uh, a lot less. Now we're doing every other sport, uh, but uh, in between sports, we're doing a lot of jujitsu, Muay Thai, kickboxing, stuff like that. That's great to keep them busy. That's just something that I think every kid needs. And, you know, I, uh, I'm very fortunate to be able to teach kiddos myself. And just there's nothing like having a kid walk on the mat. And you can tell they're a little unsure of what's going on. And then by the end of the second class, like the chest puffs out a little bit. And they're like, all right, I'll check you later, Sipu. You know, and it's the coolest thing ever. You know, it's well, yeah. It's why why we do what we do. Sam, training. Yeah. How much do you train? And then, uh, in my off season when I don't have a fight lined up, it's three to four hours a day. When I have a fight lined up, I bump it up to four to six hours a day. Uh, it's just I, I treat it like a job. It is what I do as long as as long as I can. That's what I'm doing. Well, absolutely. Well, three to four in the off season, right? That's that. That's more than a lot of people, but most people are professional fighters, right? So you know, uh, many people don't. Well, I think anybody could if they really want to put themselves into it. Then it comes down to the getting the punch in the face part, which was the problem that I had. I just wasn't really good at play, getting punched in the face. But yeah, you, you know, I, I I don't understand how people with a job, like with a real job, work out at all. The days that I'm working, working, like the last thing I want to do is go to the gym at the end of the day. So, you know, the, so me having my job being to work out, that that helps quite a bit. I'm sure it does. I'm sure. That's what I tell people when they ask about martial arts. It's like, well, martial arts is just a fun way to get exercise. And the first word in workout is still work. And most people have had, they're done after eight to 10 hours, you uh -huh. know, but they might show up to have a skill or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's I, my favorite workouts are in the morning before I have to go to, I own a food truck, so I run my food truck often enough as well. So I, But I always get my workout in before I go and do everything else. That's amazing. What's the, uh, the name of your food truck? The food fight truck. The food fight truck? Are you serious, sir? Yeah, yeah that's, our, that's our truck name. That's amazing. And where, what area are you around? A middle Tennessee. I mean, uh, around Nashville-ish. Around Nashville-ish. So anybody that really wants to, you know, get their grub on and meet the current uh, karate combat champion could also do both. They could pig out on some deep dish Chicago style pizza. There you go. And then they don't have to go to the gym if they don't want to. That's right. right? Carbo load with me. What? Carbo load with me. Ah, car blown with me. Excellent. Sam, I really appreciate your time today. And uh, I will reach out to that gentleman and I am going to uh, see if I can't get him on the show. Okay, that sounds great. I, I'm sure he would love to. Excellent. All right, Sam, you take care of yourself and we look forward to talking soon. And I have to say, keep smiling. Okay, brother, I had a friend of mine who Great. helped me throughout my life, and he ended every letter with keep smiling. So, my brother, you keep smiling, and I can't wait to talk, to, talk with you again. Hey, have a good one. All right. Thanks, Sam. Take care. All right. You too.